If I was to build a gaming machine for $1,000, this is exactly how I would do it. Welcome back to my channel, friends. And for all you that don't know me, my name is John. I've been building computers all my life. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I would personally put together a $1,000 price to performance, no nonsense, straight to the point gaming machine. With that said, let's hop into it. So for the motherboard, I decided to go with the Gigabyte B650M D3HPAX. Basically, it's included Wi-Fi. I'm going to pair that with one of the best AM5 entry-level processes you can buy. Here we have from AliExpress. Oh, no, AliExpress. Yeah, AliExpress. Uh, the Ryzen 5 7500F. So for those who don't know, this is a China exclusive chip uh, sold over in China. And basically what this is, is a Ryzen 5 7600 without the integrated graphics. So for storage, I went with a FitWalk PCI 4.0 solid state drive. It, they call it the Jupiter edition. Um, typically this goes for about $70. It's a one terabyte drive, 7200 mega transfers per second super fast. I picked this up on a flash sale for $59. And, and that's what I mean. Shop around because you can get really good stuff at a, at a discount sometimes. Like you know, for the RAM, keeping it simple, the Flare X5 from G-Skill. This is a 32 gigabyte kit. It's at 6,000 mega transfers per second, CL30. Um, no RGB, simple black and white, keeping it simple. We're going to need to keep this CPU cool. For the CPU cooler, we're going with the Peerless Assassin Mini Black. Uh, I picked this up for $32. Uh, it's a six heat pipe air cooler. It's going to keep this chip nice and cool. Uh, it's simple, minimalistic, black and white lettering. For the GPU, we're going with the RX 7700 XT. Yes, this is the Acer Nitro Edition. Yes, Acer. Coming in with some great graphic cards. So I picked this up at Newegg for $378. It also comes with a game bundle for free. So I get the total power draw of this system is going to be about 450 watts out of the wall. Uh, so you could go uh, with a 650 watt. So this is a 650 watt mag A650BN. Uh, you know, I had to do just fine for this build, but it does not leave you too much room for upgrade. You also could go with a smart series power supply from Thermaltake. This is 750 watts, which would be perfect for this build. Now, case is a personal preference here. Um, this is the Blue Gears Mystique from Blue Gears. Uh, I'm going to be honest, never heard of the brand, but I was looking for an all-black case that had a good good uh, mesh front or good airflow in the front. I wanted to stay away from the uh, fish tank style because I have, one, two, I have three of them in my house right now. Right. So with the part list out of the way, let's see what our total build cost is going to be. So as you can see, our total build cost came in around $960, $957.88. That's pretty good. That's under $1,000, and it gives you another $40 to play with if you wanted some extension cables or something. But with that said, let's do a build. So the first thing we're going to do here is unlatch this lever, lift it up, and we're going to pull this back here and expose all the pins. Now... What we're going to do here is take our chip out of the box. Now, what you'll notice is on this chip, you have an arrow in the top left. You're going to match it up with the arrow, with this arrow in the top left of the CPU socket. Real easy like. Give it a little wiggle. Make sure it's in there. I'm going to close the bracket. We're going to catch it. Push it down. Hopefully, this plastic piece will pop off. The CPU is installed. Real simple. So, 
There's our, our, our M.2. Uh, just so you know, there is a front and a back, right? So on this board, the notch should be in the lower part. So we're going to insert this at a 45 degree angle. Pretty much like that. Well, like maybe 30. Oh, really important. So I don't forget on the back of the heat sink, you have a thermal pad. You need to take that plastic off. And we just do this. For this cooler, it has its own bracket. So we are going to remove the uh, included uh, mounts that come with the EM5 motherboard. So it's really just four screws. That's one. That's two. And then it comes right out. And that's one. And two. And there we go. And you see these four little screw holes protruding. So we're just going to put these over those top of those screws. Might be a little snug, but they'll fit right over the top. And it's going to look something like that. What we're going to do is take those screws, put them through. We're going to line them up here. A little past hand tight. Don't go too much because, uh, you know, the motherboard is, you know, you don't want to snap it. You're putting too much pressure on it. So a little more than hand tight. Something like that. And I'm sure my camera's out of focus. Now, it's important to note that this is not in the middle. Typically, uh, the, the, the code, QR code, is on the back. And you want to point, typically, not always, so be careful. Um, point that towards the CPU and make sure that the groove lines up with the groove in the DIN slot. I don't know if you can see it, but there are grooves. And if they line up with a little bit of pressure, they should snap in. Perfect. And we'll do the we'll do the same here. Ooh, come on. Pressure on both sides, even pressure, push down, and you should hear a click. Nice. So there you have it. Our RAM is installed. Not bad. So there's many ways to do this, but basically what we're going to do is put a pea size, drop a thermal paste, dead center of the chip. And it's going to look something like that. So you're just basically going to line these up on these posts. These two posts. And then we're going to tighten them down. Have them lined up. Take your big screwdriver. We're going to get one side started and then the other side started. And then we're going to go back and forth, maybe two or three turns at a time. One, two, three. Then we'll go back to the other side. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, what we want to do is set up our cooler here, our fan. Uh, Real simple, no ARGB on this, so you only got one wire. Uh, what you'll notice is in the back here, we have this spot. This is where we're going to hook our CPU fan into. It's labeled CPU fan, and it's often a distant, different color, like gray as opposed to black. And in this case, it is gray as opposed to black. So 
Uh, and it's also labeled, and you can also check your motherboard manual. So we're going to put it in like this. Basically, we're just going to slide this down. Some pressure on it. There we go. And hook one side. That seems to be hooked. And the other side. And basically, that's it. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and plug this in now. You notice there's a groove there. So we'll just line that up there. It's easy to plug it in now. And that is it. We have installed everything we need to install on the motherboard. Um, and you know, so far, so good. Looking pretty good there, I think. Not too bad, huh? All right, now let's get this stuff. So basically, the IO shield's gonna snap in there. So that's what we're gonna do. See if we can't get that to snap in. Basically, you're gonna push in. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off for now, put this on the side. And these here are break offs. So I'm going to go ahead and break off the top two and hope I guess right just to get them out of the way because with the motherboard install, if you break them off, you could scratch the motherboard. And if you scratch some kind of transistor or something, you could ultimately ruin your motherboard. So I'm going to go ahead and get these two out of the way now. Hopefully I guessed right. <clears throat> so... Is always in the way. Hi, friends. Just a quick word. If you like what we're doing here on the channel, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we create new cool content. It would really help us out. Now, back to the video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this case doesn't come with fans. So like I said, I picked up a three pack and a one pack of these Thermalright PW1 fans. Uh, I'm going to put three in the front and I'm going to go ahead and put one in the back. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera, but uh, you know, the fans are a personal choice. I don't want RGB in this one. This is purely price to performance. Um, but you know, you could pick up a three or four or five pack of ARGB fans for around the same price. Uh, so I'm going to do this off camera and then I'll come back. All right. So as you can see, we got three fans installed out front. We got the one in the rear, uh, get this out of the way. Uh, I went ahead and did a little bit of cable management and we got all the fans and computer I.O. hooked up to the motherboard. There's only two things really left to do here. Power supply, graphics card. So um, if you notice, uh, I took the sticker off this, this side that's going to show because we have the cutout here just to keep it all black. Uh, otherwise, it would look something like this in the front. Um, but that's just a personal choice. I've seen some people, they take that laminated paper and they cover the one side. Uh, you know, that's always an option. Feel free. Now we got one hook anyway. We have the Acer AMD Radeon RX 77 XT. Now, this is actually the cheapest 7700 XT available at the time of filming. It's coming in at $378. Uh, 
Uh, it's also coming with a free game bundle, coming with two games, one being uh, Warhammer 4000 Space Marines 2, which we really want to play, and one more, which I'll, uh, I'll list down below. Uh, it hasn't been released yet, comes out in October, so we'll be able to get access to that once it's released. Let's go ahead and line this up. We're going to push. Till we hear a click, there's that click. Now all we gotta do is put in the two screws here and then we'll hook up our two eight pins. I must say, this build turned out beautiful. It's almost like I planned it. Ah. We got a post, ladies and gentlemen. And there you have it. Simple, price to performance, 1440p gaming bill. So let's do a quick montage and then we'll talk about the bill. There you have it, a 1440p gaming machine for under $1,000, no nonsense, straight to the point gaming machine. If you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. And maybe check out one of these other videos up here in the corner. And with that said, you'll have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye now.